uh, very good evening and welcome to Let's Talk Politics. I'm your host, Eddie Lane. And of course, as we always say, this program is really dedicated to highlighting the progress and development taking place under the People's Progressive Party civic administration, but at the same time, uh, respond to the lies and misinformation emanating from the desperate APNU AFC opposition camp. I'm your host, like I said, Eddie Lane, and this evening, uh, quite a number of things to talk about. Um, you know, today is a significant day when it comes to the preservation of democracy and to ensure that as a nation that never again are we fearful that there are elements who are willing to be part and parcel of or to, to aid, aid and abet the process of hijacking our democracy. The Ghana Elections Commission met today and a decision was taken. And, and those of you who <clears throat> look, excuse me, looked at the program on, on Tuesday would recall that uh, the discussions with um, Commissioner says Gunraj were centered on that meeting at GCOM, which was abandoned by the opposition commissioners, <coughs> excuse me, who clearly um, intend, intended then and continues to demonstrate their, their, their willingness to protect the elements in the GCOM secretariat who were part and parcel of the attempts to rig our elections. And on Tuesday, they walked out of the meeting where a vote was supposed to be taken on the future, the fate of three of the chief cook and bottle wash in the rigging attempts at the Ghana Elections Commission. In the person of Keith Lowenfield, Roxanne Myers, and of course, uh, Claremont Mingo. Today, the commission met and the three government nominate, nominated commissioners, Tibishadi, Sayes Ganraj, and of course, uh, Manojan Ryan, voted for the termination of the contracts of the three I mentioned earlier. The three opposition commissioners abstained from voting, thereby eliminating the need for even the chair to vote uh, to determine a 4-3 majority on either side. <clears throat> that simply means that the, the motion, or the motions rather that were put forward by the government nominated commissioners were successful. And as of the 18th of August, within six days, Keith Lowenfield, Roxon Myers, and Claremont Mingo are gone. They're not going to be a part of the GCOM apparatus anymore. This is a significant step. This is a significant step for the Guyanese people, as we are seeing clearly those who intend or who intended then to rig the elections and those who nakedly and openly demonstrated their support for the APNU AFC are out. And, you know, it is significant for our nation that we're able to rid <clears throat> the election body of those elements. So Guyana, Guyanese are breathing a sigh of relief, at least at the level of GCA. However, that doesn't eliminate the fact that these same persons are facing criminal charges in the local courts, along with the other, other elements like the Valdo Lawrences and, and the others. And, you know, what is important in all of this is that the court proceedings are, you know, are likely to get to the bottom of the rigging attempts and to bring out significantly the intellectual authors, those who were the intellectual minds behind the attempts to rig the elections. And in due time, in due course, we are going to get to that point where those who attempted to rig the elections to rob this nation of our democratic right to choose a government 
will be exposed. And you know, yesterday His Excellency held a luncheon uh, in honor of the diplomatic community and their, their support for democracy. Not their support for the PPP, but their support for democracy. The fact that they stood their grounds to ensure democracy prevail in this country. It is part of his first anniversary in office. And less than 24 hours, well, just about 24 hours after, we saw the rigging trail in GCOM being removed. There are others. There are others who played a part. And in due course, in due course, they will be dealt with. It is now in the hands of the judiciary to address the issues of Valda Lawrence, Carol Smith, I think that's her name, Carol Smith, Carol Joseph rather, Carol Joseph, and all the others who played a role in attempting to rig our elections. So, I know, I know many, many people are excited, are happy, are breathing a sigh of relief. And you know, His Excellency, Dr. Irfan Ali, the Vice President, Dr. Jack Gill, and even the Minister of Local Government, uh, the Honorable Nigel Dharam Lal, recently made the point. And I think Guyanese have made the point that we were not prepared as a nation to return to any elections, local government or general and regional elections with the gang of riggers who contaminated the Guyana Elections Commission in the persons of Keith Lowenfield, Roxanne Myers, and Claremont Mingo. Claremont Mingo started the process. And I'll tell you, and I know the people of this country knows that, know that, that Keith Lowenfield, Roxanne Myers, and Claremont Mingo were not the intellectual authors behind the attempt to rig the elections. They had their handlers, and we know who their handlers are. We know who wanted to rig the elections. We know who were claiming victory. We know who were outside of the magistrate court supporting Keith Lowenfield when he appeared in court. We know who were the persons that instructed Roxanne Myers to chase the commissioners and the party agents out of GCOM. We know who were the ones giving the instructions to the police and others to clear the GCOM building, the Ashman's building. But in due time, in due time, the court will reveal that. The proceedings in the court, you have to remember, you have to remember the statements of Paul are now with the registrar of the Supreme Court. The, 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 the two misplaced, um, what do you call it? Elections petitions have been thrown out. The appeal won. Fine. We don't see where, where it's going to go. We know it's not going to go anywhere. But the legal proceedings eventually are going to bring out the truth of the statements of Paul. So I think the people of Guyana are, 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 are breathing a sigh of relief. And of course, yes, uh, GCOM will be cleaned up. Enrique, Enrique Livan and the others, the flash drive guy and the others, I think they are before the courts too. And it will be addressed. We cannot. What this nation faced between August, March 2nd and August 1st will not happen again. The people of Guyana will not allow that to happen again. And they will not support us going to elections with those criminal elements 
in the Ghana Elections Commission. We've gotten rid of the, the, the key, the key ones who are passing the instructions as they receive them from Congress, please. So I wanted to deal with that particular matter from the very beginning. And I must publicly, and I think I'm doing this on behalf of the majority of the Guyanese people, express our sincere thanks to Comrades B.B. Shadiq, you know, a real stalwart, a real fighter, to Sayes Gonraj, and of course, to Manoj Narayan, who fought. And I'm happy that uh, Mrs. Shadiq is on this. I see she's on the live. You know, we want to, we want to publicly, publicly, and I'm doing this on behalf of majority of the Guyanese people. So thank you guys for being resolute, for being firm, and for standing up for Guyana, and to, for standing up for democracy, and to ensure that those elements who are contaminating the electoral process are removed. So, Ms. Shadiq says, and Manoj, I think you fought a good fight. You fought a fight on behalf of the Guyanese people. And we're ever grateful for you standing up, not only to remove these elements, but from the inception, when attempts were made, when attempts were made to insert when attempts were made to insert the likes of, um, you know, Patterson into GCOM, and we have managed, we have managed with the, the, the position, the strength, the fight of, of, of folks like Mrs. Shadiq and the others um, to, to, to really ensure that as a nation we were not robbed we were not robbed of that opportunity to have free fair and transparent elections and i think that is of of of, of great significance it is of great significance uh to the people of guyana and again I want to take the opportunity um, to say to people like uh, Mr. Shadiq and the others, uh, says and so forth, who you know have stood their ground and represented us. Um, I am attempting to see if I can get Mrs. Shadiq to join me. Um, I have sent her a link to the program in her inbox on Facebook. I'm hoping that she can join me before the program is out. Um, I, I know it's a bit of a late notice, but I, I'll be happy um, if she can come in. You know, um, we, are, we are very grateful for the fight that they would have put up and, and the struggle. Um, if she comes in before the program is, is, is through, of course, we're going to return to the GCOM matter, and she's going to give us a little bit more of an insight as to what transpired um, over, over, over the, uh, you know, during this battle. But I want to quickly move on to um, some of the other issues, the, 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 the topical issues in um, in the country at the moment. And you're aware that the government has been rolling out a number of programs that are bringing benefits to the people of this country. You know, uh, we are in still observing the first anniversary of the coalition uh, of, of of the coalition out of office and the PPP in office um, to be able uh, to transform the lives of Guyan, uh, Guyanese. We are in the process of, of observing that first anniversary. But I tell you what, when you talk to Guyanese across this country and you listen to their views, you listen to, to, to their assessment of the People's Progressive Party Civic Administration in office after 12 months, 90%, and I'm saying 90% guardedly, maybe more, less than 10% because of political reasons, 
because of, of politics um, and because of their non-support for the PPP are blindedly claiming that there isn't progress, there isn't development in this country. But 90% of the people of this country, when you talk to them, and you do the random sample, you go anywhere in this country, any community, even the communities that supported the, P, the PNC in the elections, and you listen to the sentiments of these people, they will tell you that they are satisfied with the way things are going because they are seeing a government that is in the fields, in their community, in their neighborhoods, in their regions, engaging them, addressing their concerns, addressing their issues. And I'll tell you why I'm saying all of these things now. People are happy that the government is listening. And we've seen the recent statement from the office of the president, where the... the um, where the, the the government decided to make interventions to ensure that the cost to import containers for example is cushioned so that the cost on the people of this country with regards to imported goods is reduced that that burden is significantly reduced so his excellency instructed that measures be put in place that measures be put in place to reduce or to cushion the effects the to cushion the effects the uh the cost to import containers will have on 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 citizens and i'm trying to get my hand quickly on the release so i can run it through for point eight billion dollars will be back in the hands of the, the people of this country because that is what the government will or the state will lose as a result of this thing containers were being shipped pre-pandemic for about twenty five hundred dollars it is now up it is now up to between fifteen thousand dollars and in some instances twenty thousand dollars so it is clear it is clear that you have a government that is listening a government that is willing and ready to serve you you know so the fact of the matter is the fact of the matter is his excellency dr muhammad irfanali and his government listening to the people we're hearing your cries and we're working to address uh, the issues that are affecting you. And we will continue to do that as much as we can to ensure that the lives of the citizens of this country, that your lives are improved and that you are able to survive, able to go get through this pandemic. This pandemic is affecting the world. It is affecting the world. This is not something that is unique to Guyana. This is not something that is unique to one particular part of the world. It is a pandemic that is affecting the world. And we are making every effort as a government to put systems in place to cushion the effects of this pandemic. The president would have um, announced and, and the government would have embarked on the 25,000 cash grant program for citizens to cushion to help them we have we are in the process and and, and 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 you know i think just about two regions remaining region seven and eight to conclude the distribution of the because we care cash grant where nineteen thousand dollars is going nineteen thousand dollars per child rather is going to the hands of parents who have children in the public school system monies that will be used to improve maybe the conditions under which some children are living maybe providing uh materials for them learning materials for them maybe a tablet ensure that they have access to the internet and so many other things and of course the other accompanying measures and i haven't touched 
the opportunities created in housing, the opportunities created um, in terms of jobs, and all the other things that are happening in the various communities and regions across this country. So your government is working for you. And I want to say to you, this is just year one. And I keep, I keep using this example. This is just the trailer. The full movie is still to come. This first year is the trailer. It's the beginning. It is a sneak preview of what the Dr. Irfan Ali led People's Progressive Party Civic Administration have in store for the people of this country in terms of development, in terms of progress, in, term, in terms of your personal prosperity and the improvement of your lives in your villages. This is just a sneak preview. The full, the full show is yet to come. And I want you to juxtapose or to examine rather our promises that we made in our manifesto as against what we're delivering. In many instances, we have exceeded expectations. In many instances, we promised everything that we promised, we are working to ensure that those promises are fulfilled. We have taken over a country at a time when we were in, in, in extremely, extremely serious and devastating circumstances. Um, and as a result of the pandemic, but our situation was, was further compounded by the actions of the AP and UAFC five years in office, where they, 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 they practically destroyed the economy, um, you know, borrow so much so that we were left in extremely, extremely bad circumstances, coupled with a pandemic, which had economic impact on the world over. We've managed to pull to some extent out of that. And we have managed to properly, effectively and efficiently handle this pandemic. Like no other country in the Caribbean did. Even before we assumed office, His Excellency, as President-elect, started a campaign to ensure that masks were distributed to the people of Guyana to ensure that the PPEs were in the hands of, 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 of many, many um, healthcare workers and when he assumed office one of the first acts one of the first acts of his excellency was to ensure that he reconstitute the COVID-19 national task force and ensure that the kind of assistance needed for the people of Guyana in terms of tackling this pandemic was provided. PPEs got into the hands of people. Vaccines we are dealing with that, and I'm going to come to that in just a bit. But the PNC, while they were in office, they, while they were in office, the PNC were doing about 25 to 30 tests, COVID-19 tests per day. About 25 to 30 COVID-19 tests per day. When we got in office, in a matter of weeks, it went up to 150 and 200 tests per day. So we were able to get a true picture of the situation in the country. We were able to get a true picture of the situation in the country. 
when vaccines, even before the vaccines became available, when news broke of vaccines being prepared, uh, uh, research being done um, in, in the effort to ensure that uh, vaccines become available, the government of Guyana, Dr. Frank Anthony and uh, the government, began the process of working to procure vaccines without even knowing when we were going to get. But we started that process to say, look, we have to get vaccines to protect our people. We have to get vaccines to protect um, the citizens of this country. And we were able to procure vaccines. Today, we have enough vaccines for our adult population. There is enough vaccines for everyone. There was enough vaccines for everyone. There is rather. And we are in the process of working to get vaccines for our children. So that when the time comes for us to reopen school, that there is adequate supplies to take care, to ensure that our children are inoculated and are protected. But what you have, you have a situation where, you have a situation where obstructionist elements, you have a situation where obstructionist elements in the opposition especially, are making every effort, they're sparing not a single effort to attempt to stymie our vaccination program. To attempt to pour cold water on the exercise. To attempt to convince people, those who may not be as informed as, as others, to somehow believe that vaccination is not good. But you know what is sad? Hear what is sad. Hear what is hypocritical. Hear what is criminal. Joseph Harmon, the leader of the opposition, is fully vaccinated with Sputnik. The same vaccine that he claimed had an issue. But he's fully vaccinated. The regional chairman of Region 10 who joined yesterday in attempting to pour cold water on the vaccination program is vaccinated, fully vaccinated. And all the other opposition MPs are vaccinated. But they come to you, the people of Linden, to tell you not to take your vaccine. Could you imagine? Could you imagine Harmon protected himself? And by the way, these guys ask for their families and friends and their loved ones to be vaccinated who are all vaccinated. But they want to use you as collateral damage in their narrow political campaign to gain mileage, to leave this impression that the government has failed to manage the COVID-19 pandemic. So they're willing to use you as collateral damage. They're willing to use you as collateral damage. So they're encouraging you not to take the vaccine and to create all sorts of, of, of mischief to ensure that you don't take the vaccine. You, their supporters, That is what they're doing. So when you, God forbid, are infected, you have no defense against the virus. You have absolutely no defense against the virus. Let that sink in. Think about it. Sit down. Think about the man who is coming to tell you 
the youngster in Linden, or the grandmother in Linden, or the mother in Linden, or the nurse in Linden, or the doctor in Linden, or the teacher in Linden, or the teacher in South Georgetown, or the nurse in South Georgetown, or wherever you are, the man who is coming to tell you not to take the vaccine is fully vaccinated. Let that sink in. Think about it. Do you think this guy really have your interest at heart? You think he wants to see you being protected? It's an absolute no. What he wants is to gain political mileage, is to use you as a political football, to use you as a pawn in his political scheme, to say that the government has failed to handle the COVID-19 pandemic. Because look, you who refuse to, 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 to take the vaccine, from wherever you are, got infected and you're added to the stack. And maybe, God forbid, you could be another statistics in those who, you know, didn't survive. Just think about it. Brothers and sisters, think about it. I am fully vaccinated with Sputnik V. Since March, since since May, sorry. I took my first dose in April and the second dose in, March, in, in May. And I have absolutely no problem. Even in August. And every other member of the, 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 the cabinet, every member of the cabinet rather, His Excellency, the Vice President, everyone, are vaccinated. There's absolutely no problem. My family is vaccinated. Relatives are vaccinated. None of us have a problem. Think about this. That propaganda that is being sold to you, that somehow the PPP wants to kill you, so they are, they are, they are, they are you're getting this vaccination. The people who are taking the vaccines, a majority of them are supporters of the PPP, are right thinking Guyanese who may not be supporting the PPP, but who understands this is a global pandemic and that efforts are being made to protect them. Why would, why would the PPP bring something that can harm you? This nonsense about it's magnetic and, and razor blades are holding on in your hand that you're going to become impotent and it's going to affect your ability um, to reproduce and that you're going to turn monkeys hogwash. Hogwash. Hogwash coming from people who you think have your best interest at heart. Brothers and sisters, don't be brainwashed. Don't be fooled. Don't be fooled. Harmon, Christopher Jones, Devon Sears, and all the others who are cheering you on and encouraging you not to take the vaccine and to retaliate against the program, they don't have their interest at heart. This government who invested in the vaccines, who invested monies into the vaccines to ensure that it's available this government who ensure that adequate tests are available who ensure that there is adequate facilities for those who are infected by the virus this government has demonstrated that it has your interest at heart and we are encouraging you please get vaccinated brothers and sisters we are all in this together. We are all in this together. This vaccine, sorry, this virus, don't infect people based on the color of their skin, texture of their hair, their geographical location, or who they support politically. It affects you if you're exposed. The COVID-19 vaccines available around the world, including Guyana, 
are to ensure that you have an immune system that if it becomes infected, you can fight off this virus. Come on, brothers and sisters, don't be fooled. I'm begging you. I'm encouraging you. You have access to the internet. Read for yourselves. Don't let a group of, of, of criminally or people with criminal intent because exposing people to the, to, to the, to, to the, to the virus by not, um, you know, and encouraging them not to take the vaccine is criminal. It's like you're setting up people to die if they become infected. Don't take this at all. Please. I want to wrap things up here and I want to say to you that you're big. You have opportunities to access information globally by way of the internet. And I want to say to you that the guys who are coming to you to tell you not to take the vaccine, Harmon, Chris Jones, uh, Devon Sears, the Region 10 chairman, uh, Vanessa Kisun and all the others, they're vaccinated. They're bluffing you. Or they're setting you up. They consider you to be collateral damage. They take pride in seeing you on the streets making noise and saying, I ain't taking no vaccine. I'm resisting this resistance. Right? They want to see this resistance. So, Please, you read for yourself. I want to wrap things up here, and I want to say thanks so much for being part of this program. We're going to be back with you on Saturday evening as we continue to bring you information on the progress and development taking place in our country. But again, brothers and sisters, get vaccinated. Vaccines are going to save your life, and it's going to protect you and your family. Until next time, we say thanks for watching. Have a good rest of the evening. Stay safe. Bye for now.